this video we're talking about the ovarian and the uterine cycles and a good average for this is about 28 days it can vary from person to person but we're going to go 28 days here with the midpoint being 14 and that's where ovulation happens so this was representing the uterine cycle this is the uterus the endometrium the inner part of the uterus this is the the what's the ovarian cycle here what's going on with the ovary as far as the follicle and the egg and all that the ovum and then i have the two graphs up here with some hormones plotted kind of going along this period and we can see what all of them are doing chronologically so let's just start with the uterine cycle days one through four are Men menzies so that's the p your period where you're releasing shedding off that endometrial lining and then um, at that point about day four estrogen levels start to rise and let me tell you why this happens so let's go up to this top graph we have two hormones here we have luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone two hormones that are secreted by the anterior pituitary in response to gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus so when these get stimulated, think about this word, follicle stimulating hormone. It's going to go right to the ovaries, because this is our ovarian cycle here. And it's going to stimulate about 15 or 20 uh, primary follicles that are just stuck in prophase 1 of meiosis. And they've been there since birth. And it'll stimulate about 15 or 20 of these to start maturing. As they mature, they start going through mitosis. And these blue cells here are the granulosa cells you can see the ovum the egg right there inside and then this red represents a layer of fecal cells on the outside of this follicle as it's maturing the reason i'm going through all that is because this lh luteinizing hormone has receptors on these fecal cells it's going to go and it's going to bind to those receptors release androgens the male hormone the androgens will migrate inward to the granulosa cells where there's an enzyme called aromatase that'll take the androgens into estradiol. So you can see estradiol starting to rise here. And you can see it's rising because we have more of these granulosa cells and maturation of the, all these different follicles and they're all producing this estrogen. And as estrogen starts to, uh, it hits a certain point and, and then it precipitately, precipitously rises and that will cause a positive feedback with luteinizing hormone. And this is called the LH surge for luteinizing hormone surge where it just skyrockets up at day 14. And that's going to cause rupture of the ovary in this follicle where it releases the egg, the ovum. And then the fimbrae will kind of um, escort the, the ovum into the uterine tubes where fertilization occurs. So this, this whole first 14 day period of the ovarian cycle is called the follicular phase. Whereas when the uterus, what's happening, the uterus, uterine cycle is as that estrogen increases, it increases, um, the, it thickens the endometrium. You start to get more tissue. You have mitosis and thickening of that endometrium. It's called the proliferative phase or proliferation phase. Then day 14 is kind of this major event, ovulation. And at that point, you have what's left of this, this follicle and it's called the corpus luteum at this point luteum because it has a yellowish tint to it and it will release two steroid hormones estradiol and progesterone and when these rise together instead of causing positive feedback on lh and fsh when they rise together they actually cause a negative feedback um, so they were it causes the release of an enzyme called inhibin that goes up our protein called inhibin it goes up and it inhibits gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus if you don't get that going then you're not going to get these going so you, you're going to have a, a steady decline of lh and fsh because of the incline so this these are inversely proportional negative feedback so as progesterone and estradiol increase lh and fsh decrease and that's during this this second phase the second 14 days we call it the uh, luteal phase in the ovarian cycle because of the corpus luteum. And then we also call it the secretory phase or secretion phase, the second 14 days in the uterine cycle. And that's because when you have progesterone estradiol together increasing, you start getting a lot of 
uh, spiral arteries coming up in here and a lot of secretions. If there's no fertilization event, this corpus luteum will kind of die out and degenerate and it becomes what's called corpus albicans. And, you know, and then you start the menzies and you start the cycle all over again. So <clears throat> one point I want to make is with oral contraceptives, a lot of them will have both estrogen and progesterone in a synthetic form and uh, it's called progestins, the synthetic form of progesterone. And you'll take them, um, it's important, they'll take them during this middle period here especially and when you have both of these elevated here it tricks the system and you never get that because you have elevated estrogen and progesterone remember that when those are elevated together that that um, knocks down luteinizing hormone so if you do that during this critical period here you're not going to get that LH surge that you have to have for ovulation so you don't have an ovulation event if you don't have an ovulation event, you don't have an ovum. If you don't have an ovum, you can't fertilize anything. So that's how oral uh, contraceptives, most of them work. You can have some extended release ones that just kind of keep it elevated throughout and um, it kind of eliminates the whole uh, period aspect. And so if someone suffering from endometriosis or something like that, that would be the type of oral contraceptive they would want to use. And uh, so I know that's kind of convoluted, we have a couple things going on. We have the uterine cycle, the ovarian cycle. We see what the steroid hormones are doing. And then we look at these stimulation hormones up here. So um, if, that, if you need to watch that again, go ahead and I'll catch you in the next video.